right, Guardian Academy Core Concepts Investment Strategy Overview. Another big one, another, uh, it's just a disconnect. So we're just trying to smooth out the disconnects, that gap between what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing. Uh, you sort that out and you start to get power over the outcome. Okay. It is a core concept right here. It is one of the last core concepts. There'll be about one more after this probably, which helps determine the base case, which is a combination of investment strategy and macro belief. So make sure that you have uh, been through the macro belief overview. You're going to want a macro belief. You're going to want to understand uh, base strategies, and then you can develop your base case, which is your overall kind of operating system, the, the general assumption that you are operating from that is developed by combining your solvable problem, your macro belief, and the strategy that you believe will be the highest efficacy for what you're trying to accomplish. All right, so let's go through an example. And uh, we can go over this a few ways. So I'm going to hit this from a few angles just to, to broaden the perspective. Let's say your friend invested... Um, you found out they made millions and millions and millions of dollars and they invested in Tesla. So you think outcome bias. So go back to brain sludge. You go, ha, huh, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm going to invest in Tesla as well. Well, here is what we don't know. And here is all the reasons you could invest in Tesla that all have very different implications. First is you could bet on some criteria. So maybe Tesla met some predetermined criteria. It's this kind of company in this industry. Uh, it's this old, it's this mature, et cetera, et cetera. So you could bet on a single asset based on a predetermined criteria, like a value investor. Uh, but you could also bet on Elon Musk. So maybe he had Tesla because he believes very strongly in Elon Musk. You could bet on Tesla because you believe strongly in Elon Musk. But you would also be invested in Elon's other companies. It wouldn't just be Tesla. There wouldn't be a concentration risk there. If you're betting on just Tesla, then you're going to have a different uh, concentration risk, a different portfolio than if you're betting on Elon Musk. So you can bet on a criteria. You could bet on the jockey. You could bet on the person, team, or um, uh, basically the person or the team behind it. Okay. Uh, you could also be betting on electric cars. So maybe he bet he believes electric cars are the future. His logic, reasoning, and evidence, his macro belief is in the electric car industry. So he had a little bit of Tesla, a little bit of Porsche, a little bit of BMW, and it just so happened that uh, Tesla is the one that made him rich. But that is an entirely different strategy than betting on Elon Musk. So you see how these strategies are different. He could have been betting on technical analysis. He could just be looking at the chart. He's a trader. So um, it just so happened that the, the volatility and volume lined up in a way that his brain said, yes, I should invest in this. And that is different than investing in electric cars, investing in Elon Musk, or in betting on uh, Tesla as a company. The chart has very little day-to-day, week-to-week, very little to do with the fundamentals of the company. Over a long period of time, it represents the fundamentals of the company. Okay, so you see the difference there? Uh, and I'll get into this a little bit uh, deeper. Or you could guess. A lot of people just, hmm, what stock should I pick? And they're just looking randomly with no real criteria. That is a horrible strategy, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you're throwing darts. If you throw enough darts in the dark, maybe you hit something. Uh, but that's not a strategic way. I don't really consider that a strategy. Guessing is not a strategy. But a lot of people are guessing and thinking it's a strategy. We want to have something a little more uh, foundational. Okay. Another example, like an emerging market like the Internet. Okay. You could invest in the infrastructure of the internet. What does that mean? That means you may not have any belief about any particular thing, but you believe the internet is going to be the next thing. So then you would want to invest in the infrastructure. Who are the network providers? Who are the, uh, who's providing the hardware? Who's providing the software? Uh, Maybe you're investing in, you know, you'd want to split your bets among all that stuff because you only need one Google to go a gazillion X. Okay? So an infrastructure strategy is going to be tiny bets across all of the things. What would need to be true for the Internet to work? Well, everybody needs a computer in their house. Everybody needs a computer at work. So you might invest in Microsoft and Apple, right? 
Everybody's going to need to have internet. So you might invest in Comcast. Everybody's going to need to have et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's less specific, but it's a bet on an infrastructure. And that's a perfectly good strategy. But if that's your strategy, you have to know that's your strategy so that you can allocate your resources uh, appropriately. You could bet on founders. You could say, man, Peter Thiel and Larry Page and uh, Bill Gates or just one of them, like everything they do, touch, everything they touch turns into gold. And then you would bet on all the things that they're partnered with and uh, investing in. And you might make smaller bets spread out amongst more companies. If they only have one company, you might make a bigger bet on that company. Okay? So your strategy is to bet on the jockey. That's a perfectly good strategy, but you have to know what criteria you are using. If you are betting on the jockey, then you don't have to understand the whole infrastructure. Okay, so it's a focus, resource allocation. It's just a getting a handle on what we're actually doing. You could bet on um, a component of the infrastructure. Like you could say, all right, I believe search engines. The internet's going to be huge, and people are going to search for things. So you might put a little in Ask Jeeves, a little in Bing, a little in Yahoo, and a little in Google, because we don't know which search engine is going to take over the market, but it'll probably be one of these. And w when one of these does, the returns will be so outrageous, it'll make up for the losses on the other ones. Uh, so this is just betting on a component of infrastructure. See? So we're thinking about strategies now. Or you could guess and chase. Again, not my... Not my recommendation, you do you, not what I do. Okay. Now, crypto, because this is why most people are here. When it comes to crypto, same general concepts. You can guess, which is like picking a single coin, asking, hey, what coin should I buy? Hey, what coin do you think I should buy? Uh, hey, what coin is doing well right now? Hey, what are people advertising and marketing? Um, and that's just based on sentiment or FOMO. In my opinion, it's extremely poor resource allocation because you just guess. You like throw a dart and you get no feedback and you throw another one. You're not improving your decision making and you have no real no North Star to guide you. However, if you like guessing and it's fun, cool. As long as you know that's what you're doing. It's the big key here is understand that you are actually behaving in the way that you think you are behaving, that your behavior is aligned with your strategy. You could bet on a jockey, a person, or a team. Uh, Yuga Labs is a popular one. If Yuga Labs is doing it, I'm in. I hear that all the time. Okay, that's great. So that's your criteria. Your strategy is to bet on the jockeys, the person or the team. Um, that informs where to allocate your resources, and you can eliminate all the other stuff. Okay, you can bet on infrastructure. Okay, so this has uh, not been updated, but if you're going to bet on infrastructure in crypto, then you would say, okay, what would need to happen for crypto? I believe crypto is going to be mass adopted, which means it's going to have to have at least one major platform or network. It's going to have to have oracles. Oracles have to exist for uh, crypto to be widely adopted. An oracle just validates off-chain data on chain. So if you wanted to check the weather on chain, if you wanted to validate your real estate holdings on chain, you need an oracle to do that. Okay, an or oracle bridges the gap between off-chain things and on-chain things. Uh, DeFi, you would actually need like um, financial protocols. You know, uh, Compound, Chainlink is an oracle. You see uh, Ethereum and Polygon, Kusama, Elrond, Cardano are all platforms and networks. Again, it's extensive now. There, there's quite a bit more than when I first spun this up. Uh, I believe NFTs and media will be huge, while Theta and Engine. Theta is like Amazon Web Service of, of DeFi. Okay. People will need to be able to exchange their crypto. So Uniswap, One Inch, NightSwap, KuCoin, um, all these exchanges. You might want to spread your bets amongst a few of them because we never really know, right? FTX just went under. You never really know which one is going to survive and, and become the big thing. Uh, and if your strategy is to bet on the infrastructure, you don't need to know. A currency, Bitcoin's actually a network. I think of it as a currency. What else would need to uh, be mass adopted for mass adoption of crypto is insurance, right? So you might want to get a little insurance, a little bit, uh, you know, I just like Bitcoin in general. You might want to get some exchanges. You might want to get some NFT engines. You might want to get some oracles. You might want to get some 
networks and platforms spread across evenly and you can do the math and you know so you got a million bucks i'm gonna spread it evenly or you can weight them or do whatever but you got to know that's what you're doing so that you can direct your energy to that strategy Uh, you can bet on components of an infrastructure, and this is actually uh, mostly what I do is because we build so much on the blockchain that I'm pretty good understanding of how things work, where value accrues, uh, trading fees, all that stuff. So you could bet on components of an infrastructure. That would be, you know, like saying um, a single, like farming. You can say, I really like the idea of farming, and here's the criteria that I use to farm. So you can just bet on single components. It's like a search engines for the internet. You could bet on just exchanges. You could say, um, you know, platforms. I'm just going to focus on platforms because, honestly, if crypto is going to work, like Uniswap sits on Ethereum. Polygon sits on Ethereum. Theta sits on Ethereum. So you could say... I don't have the bandwidth or time or I don't want to manage all this. I'm just going to bet on Ethereum or I'm just going to bet on Polygon or I'm just going to spread my bets across networks because no matter what, all of this has to sit on a network, right? A chain. That would be just a component of the infrastructure. You're just spreading your bets amongst networks or you're just spreading your bets amongst exchanges or insurance protocols. That's just, you know, infrastructure within infrastructure. Or you could trade the market, and that's not actually a crypto thing. It's a huge disconnect. If you are day trading, you're not actually in crypto. Not if you're trading correctly. You could be doing Forex. You could be trading uh, commodity markets. You could be trading coffee. People trade coffee. You could be trading anything. What you're really doing is you're trading uh, inefficiencies in the market. You're trading on uh, volatility and volume. So if you're just a day trader, the fact that it's crypto is irrelevant. Doing a bunch of research on crypto doesn't help you at all. Trade volatility. Um, so some of the best traders, some of the people that crush it in day trading crypto don't know anything about Web3. They don't have to. They allocate their resources to understanding uh, technical analysis, volume, volatility, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, keeping risk, risk on, risk off on a shorter time frame. That's not actually crypto. So... Just as an example, if you are doing a whole bunch of homework and betting on, uh, you know, infrastructure or a single project or components of infrastructure, and you're also sitting here trying to day trade, your strategies are not aligned. Your your resources and energy is not going to the to modifying your behavior appropriately. And so we got to know what we're doing. So just to recap real quick, especially in crypto, you can guess. We don't do that. You are welcome to. Uh, you could bet on a jockey, the person, or a team. You could bet on infrastructure, and you can bet on things with inside infrastructure, components of an infrastructure. Okay? Uh, and inside of that, you could love farming, but then you could only you could like farming uh, stables on high volume platforms, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, this comes to your macro belief. What is your investment strategy, though? It's a good question to ask, because there's a lot of ways to do this, and somebody might hit it big with Google. But unless we know what their investment strategy was, we cannot actually model it. The logic, reasoning, and evidence. Were they betting on the infrastructure? Were they betting on all search engines? Were they betting on Larry Page? Like, I don't know. What was the strategy that led to this win? Got to figure out what your strategy is. Okay, so the risk is uh, behavior not aligning with strategy. It's uh, thinking you're a value investor behaving like a trader. You can't win that. The feedback loop is broken. And a value investor has a different feedback loop than a day trader. Uh, somebody betting on a team is going to have a different feedback loop than somebody betting on an uh, individual token for some reason. Okay? So understand there's, a, there's an array of strategies. They can be combined, but by and large, we want to understand what are we actually betting on? What are we actually investing in so that we know where to do our homework, where to put our attention, and how to build our feedback loops as to whether or not we should continue to uh, deploy the strategy. Again, live to learn, give to earn. We'll break down in the, in the tiers inside the wolf pack. We start to break down our macro beliefs, uh, the strategies that we deploy. Strategies sometimes change with the market, but for the most part, um, we use strategies 
to enhance our macro belief. So our, our macro belief is guard BUSD. So any strategies we deploy are to acquire more guard BUSD. Okay. Um, don't have to do that. You could just, you know, if, if you have a strategy that is invest in infrastructure, you could just make a one-time bet or you can DCA in and forget about it and wait. And it'll probably turn out really, really well. Or you can actively deploy strategies to acquire more of your macro belief. Uh, but as per usual, live to learn, give to earn. Think about what you think you're doing and then pay attention to your behavior. Uh, what strategy are you actually deploying? What are you actually betting on? And is it aligned, again, with your macro belief, your time preference? And then share with others. Share your experience, share your takeaways, share your aha moments, share the, th the things that maybe you weren't aware of and now you are because there's going to be other people in a similar position and you may help them. And we'll see you uh, at the next video. And we're going to dive into uh, the base case. Now that you have a macro belief and an overview of strategies, you can start thinking about what is the base case, which again, is just the amalgamation, the combination of um, macro belief, solvable problem, and uh, appropriate strategy.